Welcome everyone to today's Living in Grace broadcast. I am Matthew Fisher. Thanks for joining me. Let's go ahead and have a quick word of prayer and we'll get right into today's Bible lesson. Father, in the name of Jesus, I thank you that the words I speak are not my own, but the Father who dwells within me. He does the work. Father, reveal yourself to us. Give us wisdom, revelation, knowledge, and understanding of your word. I thank you that every satanic and demonic force is crushed under my feet. Let your word have free course and go forth with power and accuracy on today's broadcast. It's in Jesus' mighty, mighty, mighty name. Amen. So we have been talking about righteousness. And we talk about when we receive life, we receive righteousness. Jesus said that we must be born again. We must be born from sin to righteousness. When we're born, when we are born again, we are born from sin to righteousness. He said, man must be born again to inherit the king, to see the kingdom of God. Without being born again, you can't see God. You can't receive the kingdom of God. There's a, And when we are born again, we might not be able to physically see a change like the a natural birth of the mother would, you know, when you can physically see the baby. But there's a spiritual change that happens when we are translated from darkness to light. Just like if I go into a room that's a dark room, you can't see nothing in it. And if I switch that, make that light switch, there's a change in the environment of the room. The room is now lit up and I can see to do whatever I need to do in that room. And that's the comparison he, he makes. He says there's a change. You go from darkness to light because I have now go from light because I'm now connected to God. Because when, I'm, when I receive Jesus, I receive righteousness. Righteousness being I receive my right standing with God. Now, righteousness is only received through Jesus. There is nothing I can do in my own ability. No, no action, no effort. There's nothing I can do on my own to receive righteousness or to receive right standing with God. Righteousness is a received by grace. It's unmerited it's undeserved. It's not worked for. I can't, I can't pray four hours for it. I can't fast for three days for it. I can't, I can read my Bible all day and all night. But without Jesus, I can't receive righteousness. Why? Because Jesus, who knew no sin, was made to be sin that I might be made the righteousness of God in him. Jesus did absolutely nothing to be made sin. He never sinned before in his, in, in his life. He never is sinned before in his existence. But he bore the punishment of our sins while without ever doing an act of righteousness, without doing anything to deserve it, just like Jesus did nothing to deserve our sin, nothing to earn it, Nothing I can do to qualify for it. Now I have received righteousness. I've received right standing with God. Who I was separated from God. And I, and I couldn't have a relationship with God no matter what. Because the sin was there. And, and sin is a separation between us and God. Myself and God. Sin is a separation between me and God. I receive righteousness, which is right standing with God. There's now no more separation be between me and God. Righteousness is what the Bible calls the promise of faith. Um, the promise of faith that we talked about last week is that we receive the Spirit of God through faith. He, said, he says, don't let nobody trick you now that... Um, 
you received the Spirit by faith. So now you continue to walk by faith. Now that you receive the Spirit, no, it's, it's still going to be, your, your, your walk is still going to be a walk of grace by faith. It's no longer you receive the Spirit and now you go off and, and now, now everything's based upon your own actions again. It's not based upon my actions. It's based upon faith. And I put my faith in the grace of Jesus Christ. I receive grace by releasing my faith into that grace and I receive it. And he said, you receive the promise, which is the spirit. The spirit being that now I can be filled with God. I am filled with God. I receive God. I have my union restored with God. But God cannot be contained in a, in, a, in a physical body. God cannot, yes, my I am filled with God, but God is not contained to a physical body. That's why he said, out of our belly shall flow rivers of living water, or out of my inner man shall flow the Spirit of God, because now I'm filled with God, but my body cannot contain God, so now God is going to manifest the God that is in me that cannot be contained by this body is going to manifest himself outwardly. That's why it says Christ in me, the anointing, God in me, Christ in me, the hope of glory. That's the hope of the manifested presence of God in my life. So I'm not just content with being filled with God. Now I want to see manifestations of the Spirit of God that is within me outwardly. So, we're filled with God. I am righteous. I'm in right standing with God. And because I'm righteous, God moves on the inside of me. But, I can, but, but, but it's not limited to just dwelling in me. He, he, he is an almighty, all-powerful God. Who, who, who releases and manifests himself outwardly. That outward manifestations of God that is first dwells within me. This is, like I said, it's received. God does not force himself upon us. We have to desire God. We have to want it. And that starts by believing. My belief is is receiving and that's what I want to go ahead and I want to get into this I want to get into talking about believing and receiving and, and, and removing all limitations in our life by faith now I want to go to quickly to Romans the 10th chapter in the fourth verse it says for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believes. So, he's the end of the law for righteousness, for right standing, for everyone who believes. So, before Christ, we, we, were, we were basically bound or contained to the law. And the law is a debt. I'm working, I'm working, I'm trying to pay off a debt that I cannot owe. It's like, you know, it, it's like the U.S. debt. I'm in trillion dollars in debt. I'm in a debt that I can't pay off. But we speak, we, we speak debt cancellation right now in the name of Jesus over that U.S. debt. I declare in the name of Jesus debt cancellation. It, it, it shall turn into a surplus. But, but anyway. I'm just, it's just speaking that for comparison purposes. I'm in a trillion dollar debt that I cannot pay off, but I'm working, I'm working, I'm working. But the more I work, the more, the greater the debt becomes. So with the law, I'm, all, I'm in a debt to, I'm, I'm in a sin debt to God. But guess what? The more I, the harder I tried to try to pay off the debt, the, hard, the more I work, the more community service I do, the more good works I do, the more things I try to do in my own ability, 
the debt only becomes greater. Why is that? Because the wages of sin is debt. When I'm working in my own ability, it's only producing sin, which is only producing debt. But faith is a surplus. When I put my faith in Jesus Christ, Jesus canceled my debt. He put me in a surplus. That means he put me in a more than enough, an overflow type state. He put me in an overflow. Like I said, we're filled with God now. We're overflowing with God. That means that sin is no longer existing in my life. Why? Because Jesus defeated sin. So he put me in faith in Jesus puts me in a surplus. Why? Because Jesus was an overpayment for our sin. Gee, sin can't compare to what Jesus did on when he shed his blood and died for us. Sin is no comparison. Sin is no match for Jesus. Therefore, Jesus is an overpayment for our sin. So, Jesus is the overpayment for my sin. So the law, which Jesus is the Christ, is the end of the law. He's the end of my debt toward God, trying to work my way out of debt, which was only getting worse, to righteousness to everyone who believes. So I went from a debt to a surplus through Jesus Christ. That's the only way we can go from a debt to a surplus through God, with God, is through Jesus Christ. There's no other way of receiving it. So, it says, for Christ is the end of the law for righteousness to everyone that believeth. So, now the question, now the question comes up. Okay, now that is to everyone who believes. Now, so now we're, now we're coming into the um, question, what am I believing in? What, what is it? That I'm to be, okay, I believe, I believe in, believe in myself. I believe, what am I believing in? It's to those who believe in Jesus. When I believe, my, I'm believing that Jesus Christ is the Son of God. I believe that Jesus Christ died for my sin. I believe that Jesus rose again on the third day, that Jesus rose from the dead and he lives now forever, standing in the presence of God, making intercession for me. I believe in Jesus. That's what I believe. My belief is in Jesus, his, his, his death, burial, and resurrection of Jesus Christ to everyone who believes. That's what, that's the people who receive this debt cancellation turned to surplus. Those who believe in Jesus. But now as a result of Jesus, what is it that I received? So, so okay, I believe in Jesus. I've, but what is it? Okay, what's the purpose of believing in Jesus? Now that I believe in Jesus, now what? Okay. Now what? Subsequently to believing, now I have to believe that I have been placed in covenant with God. There was an old covenant. The, the covenant that we, we, we read in the Bible, it says New, Old Testament, New Testament. It's really saying Old Covenant, New Covenant. So now I'm placed into a new covenant with God through Jesus. So now I have to believe in Jesus. Now I'm believing or putting my faith in the covenant that Jesus brought forth. What kind of covenant this is? This is a grace covenant, an undeserved covenant, an unmerited covenant, a covenant that I did not work for, a covenant that I did not earn, a covenant that I did not deserve to be a part of. Why is that? Because now I receive the covenant of righteousness, right standing with God. Through Jesus Christ. And a cub with in, in terms of this covenant, I'm a beneficiary of this covenant through Jesus Christ. What is the terms of the covenant? That everything that I have belongs to God. I belong to God. 
all my possessions and everything, my body, everything belongs to that that concerns me belongs to God. I we sing the song, I give myself away. Well, we don't really even have to too much do that. It's good to consciously think about that, but we have been purchased with a price. That's Jesus, the blood of Jesus Christ. God has purchased me, but guess what? It's not the end of the covenant. Now, as my covenant partner, I belong to God. Everything that I have belongs to God. But it, likewise, God belongs to me. Everything that God has belongs to me. It is a covenant. There is two sides of this covenant. I receive, God receives everything belonging to me. I receive everything that belongs to God. I become an heir of God or a joint heir with Christ. All that God has belongs to me. As he, told, he tells us, he who, he who did not spare his only son, but delivered him up for us all, for everybody. That I don't care, it don't matter. Nobody's disqualified. I don't care if religion disqualifies you. I don't quite care if your, your mom and your daddy disqualify you. I don't care who disqualifies you. God delivered Jesus up for us all. He delivered us him up for us all. He who did not spare his own son, but delivered him up for us all, won't he freely with him give us all things? We are a beneficiary through Jesus Christ of all things. When we receive God, we re when we receive Jesus, we receive all things. This means we receive God. Nothing his God has withheld from me. There has been nothing. There's no limitations on what I can have. There's now no limitations on what I can do. There's now no limitations on what I can accomplish or I can achieve in my life because God has made all things available to me. That's grace how it received by faith. So now, now that I've received, I'm in covenant with God. God has given me all. All things, and like I said, we are to give ourselves to God because God has now given Himself to us. He has filled us with His Holy. He has filled us with His Holy Ghost. God is with me now. Now this is now. Now, now this is not, now. I want to slow down for a second. This is what we're to be believing. I've got to believe in this, like I believed in Jesus, because I've I've got to receive. I've got to be able to walk in all the benefits that Jesus came for me to have. I didn't just came to okay. I believe in, in, in I, I believe in Jesus, but now now that I I I, I went and I said a prayer and I moved forward now and and everything's still the same and I'm and I'm living my life without the benefits. You don't go to your job and and, and, and and receive a benefit package, but you don't take advantage of the benefits. You receive from your job by maybe a two-week paid vacation. You're not gonna say, oh no, 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 uh, I don't I'm, I'm not thinking about that vacation. I just I just do my job, I go to work and and everything happens. No, no. You're gonna take advantage of your benefit package when you go to your job. So we have received all these things, so now we've got to we've got to walk in them. We got to walk and be and have everything that God has designed us to have. So when we so I've got to walk by faith. He says that we walk by faith and not by sight. I'm not going by what I see in the natural realm. I'm walking by what God has already told me I have through his word. That's what I'm standing in. I'm standing in grace. What God has, what I see is not the final authority. What God spoke is the final authority. 
So I'm not speaking what I see if it does not line up with what God has already spoke. I'm speaking what God has already spoken is even if it doesn't line up with what I see. That's that's what's called, I call those things that be not as though they were. I don't just make stuff up randomly. I call those things as God calls them. I speak as God speaks. I believe what I have, what God says, and I don't, don't care if what it looks like. I don't care if it look if, it, if what I see is contrary to that. We're believers. We are believers. So this is what we are believing. We, we can't say I'm a believer. I'm believing in what? I believe in Jesus. Okay, now what? This is what now? So now I receive God. I receive God. Now God is with me now. God is for me now. God is on my side now. And now that I've received God, God, <clears throat> let me say this, and God will never leave me or forsake me now because I'm eternally righteous. I've received eternal life or eternal righteousness through Jesus. So God is not going to forsake me. He's not going to leave me. He has promised to never leave me or to never forsake me. Why? Because of Jesus he, he, Jesus was forsaken that God would never have to forsake us. He said, Father, Father, why have you forsaken me? It had to be done because that way there, we will never be forsaken with God. So God is with me now, for me now, on my side now. What's that mean? I'm empowered to prosper in every area, in every aspect of my life. I'm empowered to prosper in all that I do. Why? Because God is with me now. God is for me now. God is on my side now. There is, ne there is now no limitations in my life. I now live life without limits. Why? Because God is with me and there is no limits on God. We are are with, we are empowered by, we are in union with, we are one with a limitless God. We are, we are empowered by in, in, in a, a limitless God. So the only limits that I have now is the limits I put on myself. If I put no limits on myself by, and it, 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 no, normally what we contain ourselves with is the natural. What I see is natural. These are my limitations. I, I would do this, but, 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 but this happened. I can't do this because of this. No, no, no. You're putting, you're putting your eyes on natural circumstances. I don't put my eyes on natural circumstances. I don't put limits on nothing because I have a limitless God. What is limited to the natural realm, God is not contained to the natural realm. God is above the natural realm. He's not contained to, he, he might empower us to operate in the natural realm, but he's not contained to the natural realm. There more, for I might be living in a natural realm. I might be living in a physical body. I might be walking in a physical place, a physical earth, but I'm not contained to those things. I can live my life above it. That's what we call the supernatural. I'm not just putting my faith for natural things. I've got to release my faith for supernatural manifestations exceeding exceeding abundantly above all that I ask or think because all that I ask or think is, 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 is really all I can comprehend is natural things. But I've, I've got to release my faith to a level that's, that's above anything that can possibly be done in my own ability, by my own efforts, by my own actions. I'm putting my faith in a place that it can only be accomplished by God. I can only, this this can only be accomplished by God. And we're going to, and, and now I want to get somewhere. Now I want to, I wanted to go over to John, but 
Let's go over to Mark, the 11th chapter. I'm putting faith in supernatural. So here we go. Mark, the 11th chapter and the 21st verse. Okay, the 20th verse. So this is right after Jesus had, you know, he went into the temple and kicked out the money exchangers and flipped over tables and kind of turned the place up because he didn't like what was going on there. But before that, he came to a fig tree and quickly in the 14th verse, and Jesus said unto it, No man eat fruit of the hereafter forever. And the disciples heard of it. That's all. He, he spoke to the fig tree. He spoke to the fig tree. That, 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 was, that, was, all he, that was all that happened. That's all he did. He spoke to a fig tree. He went upon his day. Now it comes to the 20, 20 verse, 19th verse. And when even was come, he went out of the city. And in the morning as they passed by, they saw the fig tree was dried up by the roots. And Peter calling to remembrance saith unto him, Master, behold the fig tree which thou cursest is withered away. He said, the fig tree that you spoke to is gone now. There was a supernatural occurrence right there. Jesus, Jesus didn't go in and, and, and pour a potion on the fig tree. Jesus didn't come in with an axe and cut the fig tree down. He spoke to the fig tree and the fig tree dried up. That was a supernatural occurrence. That did not happen in the natural. That happened supernaturally. So look, look what Jesus answered him. And Jesus answering Said unto him, have faith in God. Why? God is not limited to what a man is limited to. Man is not, God is not limited to what, to natural elements. In the natural, there's no possible way a fig tree is going to be a with, just wither away oh, in, in, tw in 24 hours. It was about, it was the time frame here was about 24 hours, the next day. There's nothing natural about that. Why? Because that God is not limited to a natural realm. Jesus produced, fed 5,000 people off a couple fish and a loaf of bread. There's nothing natural about that. There's nothing natural about that. And I declare as we're closing this broadcast in the name of Jesus, we will release our faith for supernatural results in our life. And the supernatural will manifest in your life, in my life, in our friend's life, in our partner's life, in those people connected to us lives. The supernatural will be begin to manifest for those who believe. Are you a believer today? The supernatural is going to manifest itself in your life. I declare it now. Have faith in God. Quickly, as we're running out of time. For verily I say unto you, that whosoever shall say unto this mountain, Be thou removed and be cast into the sea, and shall not doubt in his heart, but shall believe that those things which he says shall come to pass, he shall have whatsoever he say. Jesus is telling you that this this supernatural lifestyle is not just limited. It's, it's not only for me. He said it's for anyone who believes. So it's available for me to operate in. And it's available for you to operate in. In the name of Jesus. Father God in the name of Jesus. I thank you for today's Bible lesson. Continue to write this word in our hearts and our minds and increase it within us. Continue to reveal to us the height, the depth, the breadth, and the length of the love that you have for us. It's in Jesus Mighty, mighty, mighty name. Amen. Until next time on the Living in Grace broadcast, I am Matthew Fisher. God bless.